simple software breaks less often and is easier and faster to fix when it does break. Chapter 7, Google's Site Reliability Engineering Book. Chances are your application architecture is crazy. You can replace all these dependencies with Postgres. It should be the only external system you have for a long time. What's being used here is a front-end API gateway. Depending on the request, it either forwards to a last recently used cache on Redis, forwards to a microservice using either an RPC or a Kafka service bus. The microservices need a database, some use MongoDB for being web scale, others use some RDBMS for acidity, yet others the engineer felt like using Redis as a data store, then yet others use Apache Airflow as a data warehouse for analytics and of course we also have timescale DB for time series. And sometimes they also write messages back to the message bus, but in a very intricate way to make sure we don't lose data, because it's not transactional. This is over-engineered, because you probably only have 10 requests per second. You don't need to have a message queue that can scale to billions of messages across thousands of machines, or databases that can scale to petabytes of data. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 complex dependencies that might all break in interesting ways, meaning we must be experts on every single one. But when you think about it, this regarding scaling to billions of users for a moment, you probably won't do that anyways. These components are just three different types of persistence layers, all of which can be replaced by Postgres. LRU caches are conceptually quite simple. We want to store data a user might read in memory to prevent a request from going to the database. But because we have limited amounts of memory, we only keep the most recently used data, ejecting the oldest as we run out of memory. But mind you, we do this to prevent looking in the database. So how do we build this with Postgres, which is a database? Well, first off, caches are generally a form of key value stores. In Postgres, we have our table key key being a string and our value also a string, but it can be whatever you want. We add a hash index on the key and there you go. Of course, this will keep writing to disk forever. So you probably also want an inserted at timestamp and then just add a cron to delete rows older than a day or so. But this would still do lookups to the hard drive. Therefore, we must tell Postgres to increase its cache by setting shared buffers in PostgresQL.conf. Now we're leveraging Postgres built-in cache for our LRU cache needs. Message queues are used for asynchronous message passing. The most basic usage has two operations. In queue message, writing some data for later processing, and DQ message, reading and removing a message from the queue. This allows us to smooth out load peaks. If the dequeuer is busy, the messages just start piling up, but eventually we will process them. To set up Postgres as a message queue, we create a table, queue table. It consists of a primary object ID key, a timestamp for when it was inserted, and a blob or bytes for the message payload. We create an index on inserted at, sorting in ascending order. It's a first in, first out queue. With that, all that remains are the NQ and DQ operations. NQing is a straightforward insert, set all three values. The ID is set to get random UUID. The timestamp is set to now and the message is set to whatever the value is. In our case, we use roll to hex hello. Dequeuing is far more complex. We are going to use a delete query, returning the message we delete. The where is set to the inner query, where we actually select the top of the queue. Additionally, we also set for update skip locked. 
So if there's already a transaction reading and deleting, we skip the record, taking the next one. Then in the returning, we return the result of the inner query. That's how you use Postgres as a message queue. It will easily handle a few thousand messages per second, which should be enough. Otherwise, you are working at a scale when you have teams of engineers and this video really isn't needed. Postgres was developed to be a database, so this one is simple. Just use it as normal. It's not that complicated. If you need to, set up some read replicas, but if you against the odds run into scaling limits, use something like CockroachDB or Spanner. It uses the Postgres dialect and should provide a pretty simple transition to a truly distributed database that will literally scale all the way to Google scale. If you are larger than that, you don't need my help. No matter what you do, you'll first have to spend millions to migrate. But with that, we have removed your dependencies and replaced them with Postgres. Now you can either fire half your engineers or actually have them build product instead of maintaining useless infrastructure. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.